Hello everyone and welcome to the Richmond Raceway for the running of the Sundrop Cup Series 20th race on the season, the PayPal 400. Seven races left to crown our champion after the first race at Most Sport in the Chase put up a fantastic run for the points lead. Points leader Brady Burkhart leads by just one point over Jay Jefferson, two points over race winner Tib Foster, Peter Onchak is seven points back, and Morris and Yepes, the BGM duo, are eight points back, meaning the top six is under a blanket. Heading into Richmond. Dusty Neal failed inspection. He is starting this race from the 36th position as Felix Jansen in the number 61 was a late entry. They did not qualify or practice this car, but since we don't have a full field, late entries are allowed. So the 61 team was able to get into uh, the show and will start last ahead of the drivers that failed inspection. But Dusty Neal, 21 points back. Larry Hagan with a great performance is now 26 back. But Cody Goforth, 35 back. Austin Murray, 41 back. And Matty Porta and Carter Friesen, who had awful days, are right now 44 and 48 points back. But your pole sitter is Brandon Morris in the 55, looking to do what Kukulon did in the truck race, lead flag to flag, and win the event. DJ Curtis, though, in second, a driver who's looking for the rebound after he missed the chase, rolls off second in that gear wrench, number five. Peter Onjak, Carson Bowers, Tim Foster, you round out the top five as Ange Auto looks to continue dominance in the in the uh, short track races this season. You also got Austin Murray in the 91 rolling off in six. Zachary Delello, Gatlin Downey, a two washed up drivers this season who have not been up to par with their previous performances since seventh and eighth. And in ninth, you see Brady Burkhart, your points leader, alongside him. Stephen Walsh Jr. in the PayPal colors rolls off in tenth. Lotus Disparito bringing that alternate 24 back as it out qualifies the 42 again. So maybe the 42 team just does not have the drivers in that car. But right now, Disparito 11th. Kev Shear in the 63 is 13th and Spurly Tube 14th. Previous uh, Richmond winner Eli Bright sits in the 16th position, uh, 15th position. Chase competitors Larry Hagan, Matty Porta, and the king of Richmond, Jay Jefferson, make up 16th to 18th. And Diego Yepes rolls off in 20th. Carter Friesen there in 23rd, but a horrible start to the chase so far after they were spun out by their team boss, Diego Yepes. Friesen sits now the last driver, 48 back in 12th. The rest of the way through the field, you got the JSR duo, Adam Mitchell, Joseph Sergley this weekend. Cody Goforth with a poor qualifying performance puts him as the slowest of the chase competitors. Dusty Neal starting behind him, though. Max Anderson is in the 42 this week, marking his, I believe, fourth different ride he's been in this season. All for backmarker new teams to the Cup Series. The 42 team doing their best to hang on. And Vince Freeze was the slowest in qualifying after they spun out on their qualifying lap. Felix Jansen, of course, the uh, the immediate brand new entry to this show. He was not qualified into the race before this, but now he is starting this race from uh, the 35th position. And Dusty Neal failed inspection. We're ready to go racing here at Richmond. We're going to go ahead down track side for the commands to fire the engines here at the PayPal 400 at Richmond. Drivers, start your engines! With that, the engines are fired. We're ready for these 120 laps here at the PayPal 400. Sure to be an exciting race. 36 drivers on track today. We got a lot of drivers in this field. Some looking to gain in the chase. Others looking for a race win. Guys like DJ Curtis, Carson Bowers, who have had down years, not in the chase, but are trying to win a race this year to salvage anything from this season. But you also got guys like Morris, Onjak, Foster, Murray, Burkhart, and more fighting for the championship that are trying to gain as many spots as they can in this race. 120 laps around here at Richmond. Sure to be exciting in a short track race, a classic of the chase system. We're ready for these laps here at Richmond. Morris, Curtis leading us down. You got Anjato right behind him. Sure to be exciting. Green flag is in the air. We're racing at the PayPal 400. Mega jump by the 55. Now Onjak's going to clear into second. Foster fighting Curtis for that third position. And Tibbs going to dive it on into the inside and take that spot away from DJ. In the truck race, it went uh, fairly calm up in front with Kugelon leading all 75 laps. But immediately, Onjak looking to the bottom of the 55, looking for that race lead down into turn one. 
Foster's going to slide it up the track. Curtis back there in fourth. Burkhardt already picking up spots. Look further back at Lotus Disparito. Kev Shearer in the 24 and 63 with some fantastic qualifying runs today. They're trying to move their way through this field. Up in front, though, now Morris pulling away is Foster and Onjak battle for that second spot. DeLello up here in the 57, now fighting for that fourth spot on DJ Curtis. Burkhardt back there in fifth in that Xfinity Toyota number 99. Three wide further back as Shearer looking to the inside of Disparito. These corners are going to be dangerous, very sketchy if you're going in. Two wide is hard, but three wide is almost impossible sometimes, but they try to do the impossible here in the NSDCA and make room where there is no room. Neil already up about six or seven spots there. Out in front is the 55. Then it's back to the trio of Onjato. Onjak second, Foster third. Bowers clear into fourth as DeLello now looks to the inside of Burkhart. GDI's teammates Downey and Stephen Wallace Jr. working that inside line behind DeLello, trying to move their way up through this field. Both of them started inside the top 10. Nice to see them staying inside the top 10 for these opening laps. Austin Murray in the 91 back there. There is Shearer holding up the rest of this as cars go around at the back. And it is Matty Porta in it. Chase complications for him. John Dilks and Matthew Eves all involved. Morris will lead him back around on Jack second. But that is heartbreaking in the chase hopes for Sauber Racing Team's Matty Porta. Heavy rear end damage. To that Solana number 20. Vince Freeze also with some damage there. Srigley might have been a little too slow there in that 33. He has some damage. Edson back there. There's Eves with heavy, heavy front end damage to that car. John Dilks in the 51 with damage as well. And it looks like we're going to bring on Pit Road, except for one. Burkhart's going to stay out in that 99. That's going to pick him up a bonus point for leading the lap. Eli Bright's also going to stay out. We're only six laps in. It's not going to be uh, too much of a change here. If we're being honest, there's not going to be too many, you know, differences uh, in the fresher tires. It's going to be about six laps fresher uh, if they do indeed come down to take tires or if this is just a fuel stop for adjustments. Of course, there's no practice session after uh, after the races or after qualifying, I should say. You have the one practice session at the beginning of the weekend. You go to qualifying and then you set your car up uh, for either qualifying or the race. You don't get to change it. Foster's going to be the first one out on a two-tire call. There's DJ Curtis coming out next. Onjak's going to be beaten out by Murray Lane. Bowers, Butcher, Morris right there in the 55. A slow pit stop for him. And the rest of the field now cycling their way on out. And it looks like uh, I have not seen Burkhart yet. Oh, he's uh, he's right there. He's He stayed out. I forgot about that. Eves with some heavy front end damage. They didn't really do much there. Stephen Wallace Jr. with a horrible pit stop in the 65. That's going to put him back in traffic. But there's Porter Jefferson even, even has right left side damage. Vince Freeze has damage. I know Hagen noted that. He has some left side damage. So a lot of cars torn up. Maybe this incident was bigger than I thought, but only... Burkhart and Bright stay out. That puts Tip Foster into third. The first driver that came off of pit road. Let's take a quick replay, see what happened to bring out the first caution of the day. First incident of the day, Matthew Eves in the 47 is going to be racing back here. Uh, and really, there's a spin in front of him. It looks like Freeze goes sideways, but Porta was already around. Uh, heavy damage to the 47. Oh, it looks like Kev Shear is going to get into the back and turn Porta into the outside wall. And trying to get on the apron, they're sliding around. Freeze gets turned by Strigley, I think. And it puts Dilks and Eves in the wall. Lights on the pace car go out of the PayPal 400. Some things to note before we go back green. Uh, the damage to the 21 was occurred by Colton Lane on the opening lap for a little door banging there. And Jay Jefferson was hit by Dusty Neal entering turn one on that last lap before we came to a caution. Also, Matthew Eves has continued to loop up and down pit road, but has not tried to repair the damage, so he will need to meet minimum speed to continue on in this race. Burkhart Bright stayed out, but Foster Curtis Murray came down for two. Green flags back in the air, racing once again at Richmond. See if this one will be a bit more clean. You see Onjak and Bowers already jumping to the inside of Murray and Lane. That's going to be two Chevys down. Dodge has been dominant this season in the Cup Series, in the trucks, in every series. But right now it's a Toyota leading them all with Brady Burkhardt out in front. The only Toyota that's really done much of note in the top two series of con competition there. There you see the 42, Max Anderson coming on in. He's been complaining of possible damage to that car as well from an earlier incident. You see Porta and Jefferson making quick work up there as the rest of the field works on through. Down this back straightaway, Eli Bright in the 28. 
if he wins this race, he'd be the first part-time driver to win a race this season in the Cup Series as well. He would be the first driver to go uh, with two victories at Richmond. That's not Jay Jefferson. He has one win in the Crown Royal Truck Series race here a couple of years ago as he's all over the back of the 99 of Burkhart. Now Tib Foster in the 40, he's catching. Uh, again, those tires aren't going to make too much of a difference this early on, uh, but this could be good enough for Tib to get on going. Matthew Eves in the 47. We're going to have to see if he will have enough uh, to stay out uh, uh, and continue to compete in this race. Butcher is on the bottom. Butcher don't know what happened to Ryan, but he's coming off a of pit road now, right up towards Disparito and Swrigley. Hopefully we don't see a uh, incident there, but the NSDCA is starting to tell the 47 team they need to get laps in because they are not meeting minimum speed pacing around on the apron. Burkhart in the lead. Foster now in that 40 is hunting the 28 down of Eli Bright. Top three under a blanket, looking a bit further back to Curtis, who's now being attacked by the two Onge Auto drivers. There's Austin Murray in the 91. Bit of single file racing back here until you see DeLello Downey. Now Adam Mitchell, who has Jay Jefferson right underneath him. Cody Goforth in the 27s up there. Porta is angry at people for, you know, hitting him and spinning him. He has a ton of damage to the back of that car. But the good thing about Richmond, arrow is not really important. So even if you have a damaged rear end, you might still be able to continue on as he's going to get in the back of Cloud. That's going to get Cloud now under Jefferson. Cody Goforth trying not to get attacked by Kev Shearer. Shearer already spent him out once. And Matthew Eves has received a last chance effort. Carter Friesen with some heavy front end damage to that 85 car. I'm not sure where they suffered that, but they have some heavy damage to the front of that car. And that could cost them their championship hopes there. As Foster's now into second hunting Brady Burkhart. And Brady thought a different Dodge would be hunting him this race. Jay Jefferson. Now it is the 40 of Tib Foster on the back of the 99. And Anjato looking for their fourth win in a row in the Cup Series if they can do so. You have Foster's win at Daytona just a couple weeks ago. Then, then it was Chicagoland where Onjak was able to best Morris in a final last lap duel. And then last week in most sport, Foster won again. So this could be Foster's third win in four weeks as well as Onjato's fourth win in four weeks if he can hang on up there. But Burkhardt continuing to lead and pace this field. And the 47 team of Matthew Eves they are going to be parking the 47 for not meeting minimum speed, maintaining a race raceable pace for that CFRO car. So Matthew Eves, his day will be done in that 47 team as he was just trying to survive, but you can't just run the apron to survive in the race. So Matthew Eves' day is done. CFRO parked in this event. Meanwhile, their boss, Tip Foster, up in second hounding. Now Bright goes wide. That's going to bring Carson Bowers up into the mix in the 25. And he's going to go right by Bright. That's going to be on Jotto. Now starting to convert, uh, converge onto this number 99 of Burkhardt, who is out in front right now leading some laps. Murray now all over the back of Curtis. This is uh, technically Alliance Partners until the end of the season is DJ really felt the pressure goes very, very wide, and that's going to allow Murray to jump to the inside. Now Hagen up here in the eighth spot. There's Dusty Neal in 11th. He doesn't have any damage, so hopefully the other CFRO driver will be able to run well. Carter Friesen with that heavy damage. Jefferson hasn't really been putting the pedal down this race. He's back in 16th. Uh, it might be that left side damage from Dusty Neal earlier, but Neal's running pretty fine, and you'd think he'd have more damage. Uh, to the front of that car than that. Porta with some rear end damage. There is Goforth. Yepes not running very well here at Richmond today. Uh, Gatlin Downey's really dropped to the back and the rest of the field we're just looking through. Max Anderson at the tail end of that. So field starting to get nice and spread out. Starting to see a normal Richmond race where the field kind of, you know, you spread out and you run your laps, you run your pace. And as this race progresses, that's how you make those moves. But Burkhart, Foster, Bowers, Onjak, and Bright are your top five now as they run here at Richmond. Shout out to Larry Hagan. Came into the chase as the 12th seed. Just barely got the wild card spot. About five points over Colton Lane at Chicagoland was all that changed that. And Larry, a top 10 run last week at Mosport. Now he's in the top 10 here at Richmond. And of course, he is a short track and road course guy. But he was able to drive the BK Racing number 23 truck to a top 20 finish yesterday. And that was on pace in the truck series, especially for a truck that has only made three of the eight starts that it has attempted this season. So Hagen, a very strong racer on the short tracks and road courses. He's hoping that he'll be able to continue this momentum through the chase. But... 
it still could be a long shot, a very big long shot for him to take home this title. Morris in the 55 now working to the inside of Hagen. That's for that eighth spot or seventh spot now as Curtis was the one to drop it back. It looks like Monster Motorsports' car is starting to fade. Curtis, is uh, he was up inside the top five. He's dropping back. Friesen has that damage, and he's up on that outside line. And you see uh, Logan Cloud a bit further back. There's Colton Lane in the 05. As now DJ Gibson, give him a shout-out. A driver who is unknown about his condition for next season uh, has not stated if he's going to return to Zachary Racing or the NSDCA, uh, but he has had rumors of his retirement, so we're hoping Gibson the best. He's now making his move to 11th over Dusty Neal, and this ZR team just trying to do their best here. Zachary Delella was also having a good run earlier in this race. He's now back in the 22nd spot. There's Joe, uh, Kev Shearer, JSR's team also back here. Uh, pretty, pretty, pretty slow. Top four now getting out and pulling away, and it is three Ange Auto drivers chasing down the lone SBR Toyota up inside uh, the top 10, really the top 15. The next SBR to Toyota in line uh, is the 20 or 82 of Jacob Edson in 19th, and then it's Irving Allison 24th and Ryan Butcher uh, one lap down. A gearbox issue. Joseph Srigley is actually out of this race with a gearbox issue, and of course Eves was parked in this race for not meeting minimum speed. Foster there in second. Bowers third on Jack fourth. Foster getting a big run down the back trying to catch up to this number 99 of Burkhart. And he has the car to beat possibly for this championship this year. He has gone off in the chase the last two years, uh, if you count this year, uh, because he did have two wins last season. Was, I believe, only a runner-up to Jay Jefferson in chase performance last season. And if he was in the chase last year, I think Tib really could have had a truck championship. But I think now he has his sights set on greater pictures. If he's running second right now, he would uh, not be the points leader as Onjak is, is fourth and Onjak's about four points ahead of him. Or no, uh, it's the other way around. Foster is about five points ahead of Peter. So as they run right now, that's how that sets Fly by here as the top four have left the screen. The rest of the field working their way around. Jay Jefferson kind of mired back in traffic and dropping. Dusty Neal back there as well. Freezing with damage. Yepes stuck at the back of this one. We are 34 laps through this event. And now the top three, or four I should say, second to fourth in Foster, Bowers, and Onjak starting to fight each other as Burkhart is driving away with this thing. So this 99 team... Looks like they nailed the setup. They stayed out, got that track position. Now he is in the race lead. We'll see if anyone will be able to catch him like they were able to catch or not able to catch Kukul on yesterday. Onjak's going to make his move for third around. Bowers tries to clear. Bowers racing him a little hard, but, you know, that's allowed. I mean, just don't crash your crash your teammate. That's all that's, that matters because Bowers is still fighting uh, for his season too. He's not fighting for a championship but he wants to grab a win and he wants to show, you know, he's not washed up yet. He can still go out there and fight with the big dogs. And really in this chase, he's doing that. He's doing what Tib Foster did last season. A second place finish at Most Sport and right now inside the top five here at Richmond. Now Onjak starting to catch up to Tib. It looks like Tib's car starting to fade a little bit and Onjak might be coming to life. We'll see if he can get up there and catch Burkhardt. Fuel window's about uh, 45 to 55 laps here at Richmond. So that being said... Burkhart will be coming up close on that fuel window as we head uh, through this race. Tib Foster with a big run through three and four. Let's see if he can make it run down the front straightaway. He is on the back of the 99 heading into turn one. Can he make it work? Can Onjak get up there and make it work? You got two very fast Onjato dodges behind you. Well, even three with Bowers just a little further back. So Brady's going to be starting to feel that pressure, especially with Foster. Two points behind him in the point standings. If Foster wins this race, Burkhardt finishes second. Tib would be your points leader heading out of this one. And here he goes for that race lead. The SBR power is going to go away as here comes Foster. Two times in the last three races, he's gone to victory lane, and now he is fighting with Onjak clear into second. And here comes Bowers, your defending Richmond winner uh, from the truck race last year. He's into third, and just like that, in one lap, Burkhardt goes from first, leading an Onjato train, to being the caboose back in fourth. Now Onjak all over the back of Foster. He wants some bonus points, but this top four, three seconds ahead of fifth place. Brandon Morris in the 55. There's sixth Eli Bray, his teammate, Larry Hagan is 7th, Curtis 8th, ninth looks to be Colton Lane, and 10th, Austin Murray. 
Kukulon up in 13th, Porta in 14th. As damaged as that rear end is, I don't think they need to touch it this race. It's he won't win the race with it, but he's doing very well. Neil 15th, Jefferson 16th. There's Butcher a lap down. Goforth right now sits in the 18th position. Carter Freeze in 19th, and we still got to get a, uh, a report on that front end. Yepes in 20th. That is the last chase contender there. So the chase guys are running pretty, pretty well as they run so far in this race. Delello dropping back. There's Felix Jansen in the 61, making his uh, Cup Series debut. He's just inside, uh, just outside the top 25 there in the 26th position. Now Bowers has gotten into second. He's going to look for more down to the bottom on Foster. Burkhardt on Jack fighting back behind him. And here comes Bowers with the run. Burkhardt going to get a big run off the corner. And if Morris can get up there, it could be basically two of the powerhouses of the Cup Series, the BGM SBR Alliance and the Anjato and TSR Alliance up here. If uh, TSR was up here. But TSR does sit sixth and seventh. So that is two alliances, really, that are inside this top seven. The Dodge Alliance and the Toyota Alliance. So that is showing you the speed that these guys have had this season. Peter and Tib going to make contact there. And we saw coming off the corner, Tib was being real aggressive with Peter, kind of keeping him down low. And now it looks like uh, just some contact there. So that's going to mess up the left side of Tib's car. Hopefully it won't mess him up too much, but he's going to go wide there. Might be losing some handling in that 40 as here comes Morris in the 55. He's gained on this front four as they battle, and he's going to look for that fourth spot on Tib Foster. There in that 55, looking for a great run. Four chasers inside the top five being led by Carson Bowers' is Claritin number 25. We're going to go ahead, take a quick commercial break, bring you guys back to the action here at the PayPal 400 at Richmond right after this. Back live here at Richmond, leaders catching lap traffic. Carson Bowers working his way past Vince Freeze. Another driver came down pit road. That, I believe, was John Dilks. But Burkhardt second, Onjak third. Foster fighting Morris for fourth. Bright, Hagen, Curtis, Lane, and Kukulon now your top ten as they go. But it's all Carson Bowers out in front. But with John Dilks coming down pit road, that might mean we're getting into the beginning of our pit stops here in this race. And uh, as this field continues on, Jefferson to the inside of Neal. Back there now, Gibson fighting Kukulon. Up front, it's been pretty calm since they started spreading out. But now Burkhart trying to work his way past Vince Freeze in the two car. Burkhart going low. Onjak going a bit wider as Freeze goes way wide. And now they are starting to work their way through lap traffic. Next up, Aiden Smith. So that's two Monster Motorsports cars at the back of this one. Uh, not shocking to see, especially after how Monster Motorsports' uh, collapse this season has been extravagant. John Dilk's back out on track. Carson Bauer's your race leader. Now Burkhart has on Jack all over the back of him, side by side, or, well, it was it's about to be side by side. Just, just knows the tail now between Burkhart and on Jack. And this could also be for the uh, points lead if Burkhart drops back a little bit in that 99. We'll see how good of a pit stop he has. Uh, when they come around, but he could be a little off cycle as well uh, in that 99 car. And there you see him jumping on in. He'll be the first car in uh, from this lead group at lap 53. So if he lasted lap 53, he and Bright both stayed out. Remember that they last till lap 53. So of about a 45 to 55 fuel window is correct, which means uh, the race leaders, Carson Bowers, Peter Onjak, Tib Foster, should be able to last... Uh, Assuming they've, you know, filled it up on fuel, they should be able to last till about lap 60 here before they have to come in. So we'll see what'll happen there. But it's Bowers out in front. You see a, just a jumble of slower cars up in front, of lap cars up in front as they're trying to work their way through. Uh, these guys are all still battling, but now Bowers is going to have to work his way through some lap traffic because he is absolutely pulled away from the rest of the field. Two seconds, 2.2 over Peter as he gained some time last time. Now Morris Foster working their way past the lapper of Vince Freeze. And we'll make sure to keep a look and see if anyone does indeed come in. There you see Burkhart now in the middle of this lap traffic uh, back here. Could go two laps down uh, if Bowers can catch him in time. So we'll see if Bowers can move fast enough to stay ahead of Burkhart. And we'll see which strategy actually works. Undercuts usually work uh, much better, except if there's that. Caution is out. And that changes everything the 99 cars done for bowers is all over the back 
of uh, the 95, and it looks like Bowers is go is go, did let Max Anderson by at the line just barely. So uh, no, maybe Max Anderson is not. We'll see if he goes by the pace car, or will Bowers pass him? Not sure. Okay, I think Bowers is going to be passing Max Anderson there. Yes, he is. So uh, Anderson is trapped a lap down. So is Burkhart now. And Bowers is going to lead them onto pit road. And it pretty much expect, you know, everyone on the lead lap is going to come on in. But now Eli Bright, Brady Burkhart, their chances at this one are over. Their fuel strategy does not work as a spin at the end. So everyone is going to be on in and you're going to go four tires and fuel there's no other if, ands, or buts about it. Now, the question is, how far down is Burkhart? One lap down, right there. So if he stays out, Bright's two laps down, but if Burkhart is only one lap down and comes uh, and stays out, he could be on the tail end of the lead lap, but then he'll have to hang on over the Anjato guys, who definitely want him a lap down. So coming back onto track here, Bowers will be the first one out. On Jack will come out in second. Morris Foster is going to beat him out. Hagen up to fifth. Lane sixth. And it looks like other than that, that looks pretty, uh, pretty fairly similar to how they came in. Uh, Aiden Smith's going to pick up a few spots there. Spurly tube a bit slower over time. Stephen Wallace Jr. struggling on pit road all day. Butcher comes in. So the lappers that did not pit before this, Bright, Burkhart, and Dilks uh, did. Those guys come in. So it's these guys up in front they're going to have to worry about. So now Burkhart is at the tail end of the lead lap. He has Eli Bright in front of him, John Dilks behind him. Dilks is slow. Not slow enough to really be a factor, but slow. If a caution comes out immediately, Burkhart could be back in this fight. But... Eli Bright's definitely out of it. He's one lap down. So is Dilks sitting right now one lap down. Max Anderson two laps down in the 42 as they run. So he also got Freeze and Butcher was at the tail end. He came down to pit. So he will not be able to fight for his lap back. We'll go ahead and get a quick replay. See what happened to bring out the second caution. Of the, or yeah, the second caution of the day here at Richmond. And bring you guys back after that. Similar to the incident yesterday, Dusty Neal all over the back of Gibson and just sends him for a ride. Uh, no payback there uh, on this one known, but there is a nice spin for the 53. Keeps it off the wall. No damage to these guys. Second caution of the day. Lights on the pace car go out that time by. Carson Bowers, your race leader. Peter Onjak in second. Tip Foster third. Brandon Morris, 4th. Larry Hagan, 5th. Colton Lane, 6th. DJ Curtis, 7th. Austin Murray, 8th. Sebastian Kukulon, ninth. Logan Cloud are your top 10. Burkhardt is at the tail end of the lead lap. If he gets passed by Bowers, he could have this race over for him. Eli Bright just ahead of them and John Dilks in the 51. Those two are laps down, but still at the tail end of this lap. Or tail end of this field. So... Those three are ahead of your top three, Bowers on Jack Foster. No one really t decided to repair any damage on Pit Road. Porta, Friesen, Foster, and Hagen all have damage, and Jefferson. So that's five of your chase contenders right there. All have some type of damage, but none repaired it. So coming down the front straight away, we'll see if Burkhart will be able to hang on and keep his lead lap privileges. Green flags back in the air. Bowers on Jack, lead us down. Peter is right on the back of that 25. I don't know if he's pushing him. I don't know if he's trying to hit him. Uh, but he was definitely getting him back past this 51 with all his might. And that's going to get Bowers. He's going to try to clear him, and he will. But now Burkhart and Bright have pulled away. They have fresh tires, and they're not slow. They've been competitive this race. As Onjak goes full send by Bowers into turn one. And Dilks is going to go right back to the inside. Now Foster's getting hung out to dry with Bowers as Larry Hagen is looking for a second-place run in this 21 car. There's DJ Curtis right there. Morris all over the back of Foster as they come off the corner. You got a whole pack of cars together as they're trying to work their way past the lapper of Dilks. If Dilks would just get out of the way with his... Johnson performance car and now one car on pit road coming off of pit road that's Disparito is, is she going to be right under Hagen yes she will so that could screw up Larry Hagen big time 
as he can't dive to the inside. That's going to bring Bowers back into this, and Bowers is going to go back to that second position and back around Hagen. So now some lappers are playing some mean strategy for the rest of the field as Onjak slowly checks out from the rest of the field, but Onjak right now is in a hurry because the guy in front of him, if he gets a big run here like he does and puts him a lap down, that could be big in the championship hunt for Burkhart. And here comes Onjak all over the back of the 99. Can he get by him is the question. It was hard to, enough to pass him for the lead. Now he's trying to hang on and not go a lap down. Now DJ Curtis there in the five was sideways off the corner to the inside of Hagen. There's Dusty Neal up here. Jacob Edson, who ran very well in the spring race here. There's your spring race winner, Jefferson, finally getting himself to, near the top ten with Porta and Foster. All damaged chase contenders right there. But out in front, it's Peter Onjak with a significant significant gap over Carson Bowers DJ Curtis clear into third Neil fourth Morris into fifth is Hagen now uh is stuck on the free ride to the back of the grid he's gonna fall back to it looks like seventh there as that is Edson now poured out versus Foster for that eighth and ninth spot Jay Jefferson inside the top 10 Cody go forth now inside the top 10 and contact there between Hagen and Edson that's getting scary but with Jay running this well He's only, he's only one point ahead of Foster, about six ahead of Onjak. So with those guys running well, as he's going past Foster there, but with those guys running well, he's still not going to be out of the woods yet uh, like the truck championship, but he's still running well. But Onjak desperately trying to get points leader Burkhart uh, down a lap. Bowers just ran it super wide. That's going to bring DJ Curtis into the mix. And these are two, probably two of the strongest non-chase competitors in the field. Curtis has a strong card monster. And Carson Bowers can overdrive this 25, and we've seen it before. He, he had a great car last season, drove it to the championship, but this year he's still been pretty uh, driving it pretty freaking well. There's Jay Jefferson. Gibson was the reason for the caution. He's now moved back up almost inside the top 10. His go-forth is really slowing Jay down, and you know how Jay goes with guys that slow him down, whether you're on the lead lap or not. Now Carter Freeze in there. There's Kev Shear. Diego Yepes looks to be, no, Murray is the last chase competitor in the field currently on track position. Onjak has gotten by Burkhart there. So Onjak, clear of Brady. That's not good. If a caution comes out, Brady's trapped the lap down now, and Onjak's pulling away, so this could be bad for the 99 team. Their strategy was basically bent on if this race went green, and it did not. It backfires. Battle for fourth is heating up as the top three are pretty single file. Dusty Neal fighting Larry Hagen. That's for that fourth position. Two underdogs in the chase here. Both got uh, one win on the season. Hagen's was for the wild card. Neal was able to point in. Caution is out. So Bright's going to get on the tail end. He's still a lap down. Oh, boy. Onjak was real close. Burkhart's going to be on his back bumper but does not get by. And Brady will be trapped a lap down. Zachary DeLello in the 57. Heavy damage to that car. Looks like Irving Allison as well has some damage. Looking the rest of the way through. So that is heartbreaking for that. And Burkhardt, he's ahead of Onjak. He's trying to convince the officials, but there's no convincing here. Onjak is... Uh, is the race leader unless they let him? Which, if they're if the 44 is coming down pit road, well, Burkhart's still going to be on the tail end of the lead lap because they're coming in. But will Brady come in right here? Uh, let's see. That that's about 55 to go. Meaning, no green white checkers. You can make it to the end on this pit stop. I think Vince Freeze. Okay, Vince is a lap down. I thought he was, if Freeze was on the lead lap, I was about to be shocked. But this could be the money stop here if we don't have any green-white checkered finishes. Uh, speaking of those, the NSDCA has ruled that it is in their best interest that they will not run unlimited green-white checkers. Instead, have three attempts at it as they are afraid of another Pocono situation uh, and drivers running out of fuel on Jack Bowers Neil out in front Hagen Edson up to fifth Gibson up to sixth Curtis and Foster side by side there's Cloud Morris is going to drop back but now there's a bunch of chasers right behind Jay Jefferson who would be uh, one of the competitors leading that chase battle the rest of the field coming on out and Burkhart I think he sees the writing on the wall he's going to bring it in four tires and fuel for this number 99 team, he'd be uh, the only one that would have stayed out anyway. 
So he probably would have been passed immediately if they got by him that easy. So the 99 team comes down pit road. They won't have to make another pit stop this race, most likely. Uh, but that is heartbreaking for Burkhardt, a championship points leader, your regular season points leader. That's starting to look more and more like a curse than a blessing. The first two years of the Crown Royal Truck Series chase, your regular season champions were Blake Maurice and Diego Yepes. They ended up winning the title. Last season, it was Austin Murray in the truck race. He had a horrible chase and did not win the title. And this year in the truck series, Roger Ray was the regular season points leader, and he is very far back from the cutoffs or from the points lead. So Burkhart is another driver. That could be the start of the you don't want to win the regular season title because you might end up losing the championship instead. A new looking top 10. Some drivers hungry in the mid pack that are going to be driving through this field. We're under caution for the third time today here at Richmond. Making his debut, Felix Jansen in the 61 is going to get into the back of John Dilks. Spins the 51 up the track, so a bad day going worse for Dilks. But trying to avoid it, it looks like Irving Allison loses control and DeLello is going to run right into the side of him. Heavy damage to that 57 car. Lights on the pace car go out. We are now inside. Uh, this is actually going to be coming to 41 to go. So uh, with the fuel window being about 53 laps, we saw Burkhart and Bright run it. You should be good for a run to the finish and possibly one green-white checkered. Other than that, you might start running out of fuel. You might start having to come into pit. Peter Onjax, your race leader. Carson Bauer, second. Dusty Neal, third. Larry Hagen, fourth. And Jacob Edson in fifth. Gibson is 6th, Curtis 7th, Foster 8th, Cloud 9th, Go forth 10th. No lappers up front means we can go racing. Green flags back in the air. And the final 40 laps at Richmond are back underway. Bowers a bit of a poorer start, but he gets a jump through the corner. It's going to hold up Neil and Hagen a bit, so there's a couple car lengths between the top two and the second two. We'll see if those Ange Auto guys can now start checking out out there in that race lead. Back in fifth, Edson sixth, DJ Gibson, Curtis in seventh, Foster eighth, Cloud ninth, go forth tenth. They get out of the mayhem. Morris in the 55. The 77 of Yepes are going in there. Porta's going to get to the inside of Jefferson. Jay's been stuck in traffic all day. He doesn't have the speed to get up there, I don't think. I don't know if this cup car is really suited for these different conditions. Well, slightly different conditions as Porta's all over the back of him. Contact there as Jay's going to be sideways into the onto the apron. Now he's three wide with Yepes and Downey. What a move by Jay Jefferson. Almost spun out. And he's going to take that into a three-wide pass and gains two spots out of it. That is a wheel man behind the 48 right now. And as Matty Porta tried to get him out of there, he helped him pick up two spots on Yepes and Downey. So Jefferson just pulled the greatest save of the, save of the season right there in that 48 car. Looking further back, I saw a little contact. They're getting definitely sideways coming off of turn two. Turn four, it's much less pronounced, but these guys are really struggling through two. Burkhardt's slow. He's two laps down. Is there an issue on the 99? Bowers is your new race leader. We missed that. It's not an NSDCA uh, Cup Series race without missing a battle for the lead or a change of hands of the race lead, but we've been, we have not been short on battles for this race lead as Carson Bowers back in the lead. Neil Hagen, Curtis, your top five. Edson, sixth. Gibson and Cloud running very well today. Go forth. Shout out to Cody. Right now, 10th. He has no top fives in this Cup Series season, and he's trying to win a championship without any. So right now, he, you know, top. if he finishes sixth the rest of the chase, maybe he can win the title, but it, it'd still be a long shot. Foster there up the track uh, goes Porta, so that's going to get Foster a spot. Jefferson, he's back to 13th, still struggling with the car, saying it is not handling like it used to be or it should be uh, in this race. Up in front is Carson Bowers going to the wide angle shot here as we come through three and four. There's Bowers on Jack Neal pulling away. Rest of the field staying relatively calm. That back half of the grid is where you're going to be seeing the carnage if it's going to happen. A lot of more inexperienced drivers and a lot of drivers fighting for positions that they need. If you're not in the top 10 right now, like if you are Porta, Jefferson, and especially Murray or Yepes, you can't be this far back. You got to start gaining some spots to have a real shot at the championship. And Carter Friesen as well with their front end damage. 
But Carson Bowers won this race last year in the Truck Series. He's looking for his first win this season. He, this is where he got his first Truck Series win. Now looking for his first Cup Series win here at Richmond. Looking to be uh, the only other driver than Jay Jefferson to win multiple races at Richmond. As Onjak's going to look to the inside of Bowers. This is for that race lead, but Peter's going to give him the room. Maybe he was just testing that move. You saw at Chicagoland when he went to win. He was testing every line he could until the end when he finally got around Morris using one of the lines he used before, uh, trying to get those momentum. So maybe that's Peter right there saying, Carson, you can lead these laps all you want. I'm going to take a look. I'm going to experiment to see what lines I can catch you with and when the moment's right, move around Carson. So Onjak all over the back of Carson and uh, it also helps that these guys are teammates, and these guys are both champions of the Mountain Dew Custom Series and both respect each other a ton. Of course, Bowers re-signing to Anjato for, I believe, another three years, which is great to see for a two-time champion in the NSDCA continuing uh, his top series campaign with an iconic team. Uh, but Onjak is all over the back of him. I think right now Peter can pass him if he wants to. If he really wanted to, he could he could really pass Bowers as they're going to make some contact coming off of the corner. But I think he's just letting him ride. I think he's letting Carson have that moment in the, in the sun right now because he hasn't the, for a majority of the season. But Peter is all over the back. Caution is back out on track. Cars around. That's Logan Cloud into Zachary DeLello. And Burkhart's going to have some front-end damage from that. We're under caution. DJ Gibson, heavy damage. Jay Jefferson... Did he get damage in that? And coming back around, there's Bowers and Onjak leading him back around. So now we're within 30 to go. This is when you're going to see the carnage and you're going to see the moves, the tempers, the fenders all flaring, and the, and the patience is going to be running out for a lot of drivers. But Jay Jefferson, I think he was involved in that incident. He's... He's back in 2030. He has some rear end damage now. DJ Gibson. So that's both ZR cars just totaled in this one. We'll see if Gibson will be able to maintain his uh, uh, maintain and finish this race. Jefferson's 22nd now. Burkhart got some damage in that, but it's only Gibson diving down pit road. And with his bent up of a front end, as you see on that 53, I would bring it in. You got to at least uh, try to repair it. So that's what they're going to do. Bowers, Onjak, Neil, Edson, and Curtis, your top five here at Richmond. We're going to be going back racing with about 30 laps to go. Uh, uh, under 30 laps to go already, so about 25 laps to go. Let's see what happened. Let's bring out the next caution here at Richmond. And Jay Jefferson all over the back of Cloud pushes him into turn three. And then Cloud's going to get a little sideways, a little slow. But Jefferson just comes right up into the 50, bounces Cloud off of Kukulon, and they go for a ride. DJ Gibson, heavy damage as well. Zachary DeLello's going to get some heavy damage in that. So both ZR cars in it, as well as some chasers. Jay Jefferson bounces off the wall. He goes spinning up into the wall. You also have uh, Brady Burkhardt getting a piece of this. So a couple strong race cars torn up in this one here at Richmond. We're back live here at the PayPal 400 in Richmond. Carson Bowers, your race leader. Peter Onjak, second. Dustin Neal, third. Jacob Edson, fourth. DJ Curtis, fifth. Logan Cloud has taken the car behind the wall. His day done after a promising top 10 run. DJ Gibson back out on track. 26th and the last driver on the lead lap. Eli Bright, Ryan Butcher, Vince Freeze, one lap down. And then Max Anderson, Lotus Disparito, Brady Burkhart, John Dilks, all two laps down. Jay Jefferson was involved in that incident, uh, saying the car not handling well. He's now 22nd in that 48 car. So the top two in the point standings currently outside of the top 20. But Tib Foster, Peter Onjak, third and fourth in the point standings, both inside the top 10. And Onjak on his way to possibly his uh, third win on the season. Carson Bowers, Peter Onjak, Dusty Neal, Jacob Edson, DJ Curtis, your top five. Three of them not fighting for ch a championship. We'll see if they'll race these chasers hard for a win. Coming down the front straightaway, we're back racing. Green flags back in the air, and Bowers gets a nice jump down into one. Looking further back, though, Curtis is going to be the one jumping out of line. He wants to get back into victory lane this year after it's been so, so long. Look at all the chasers right here. Hagen back to Yepes. That is seven chase contenders under a blanket, and they're all upset with each other and all know that they need to outpoint each other for spots. Caution is back out, and it's a big one involving Jay Jefferson. Brady Burkhart's in the wall with John Dilks. Disparito's spinning. Everyone trying to keep it calm, and now 
Short track racing at its finest. Tempers are gonna breathe. Tempers are going to lead to more cautions. The 48 of Jefferson involved in his, I believe, third incident of the day, if you count him and Neil getting together, uh, but of course not spinning around. So some heavy damage there. Burkhart damaged as well. So that is big in the championship hunt for both of these drivers as the entirety of the chase field is pretty much inside the top 10, top 15. Carter Fries is the last one there in 17th outside of uh, Burkhart and Jefferson. So we're under caution again with 20 laps to go. We'll get a quick replay. Bring us back to the action here at Richmond right after this. Jay Jefferson in another incident here. He's going to look to the inside of Irving Allison. Riley Spurley too makes it three wide. And now you're going to see Ryan Butcher back there just slides up a hair. Hooks Irving, and that's going to put Irving into Jay. Aiden Smith goes for a spin. Riley Spurly Tube and Eli Bright, so a bunch of TSR guys right in this incident. On board with Eli, and you see Jay actually moved Irving out of the way, and then Butcher just comes up trying to follow him, just hooks slightly together, and it's going to be a spin for Jay Jefferson. His day not going as planned here for a regular Richmond race. Doesn't look like he's going to re repeat and sweep this season. But Eli Bright was able to make it through it fairly cleany, cleanly. A big spin on the back straightaway brings us to yet another caution today at the PayPal 400. As we continue to run around here at Richmond, we've had a couple restarts that just cause cautions and cautions. Just like a short track race, you have so many cars fighting for spots. Now that we are done with our green flag stints, really, this is a shootout to the end. And you got to try to keep it as clean as possible to be able to continue on here. But you know that you got chase contenders at the back, especially Jay Jefferson. We saw how aggressive he was on that last restart going three wide. Now it's put him even further back, so he's even in more desperation for points. Burkhardt, his biggest rival, is 30th. Jefferson is 25th. But you got Onjak and Foster, who are about to take the chase lead if they can finish out this race strong. Bowers, Onjak, Neil, Curtis, Hagen, your top five. Green flags in the air, and we're racing again at Richmond. Neil all over the back of Onjak already as they head down into one. Let's see if Neil can make a move in this number 94. Kukulon won the truck race here yesterday. He also won the truck race at Michigan. Who won the cup race er, at Memphis, I should say. Who won the cup race at Memphis? Dusty Neal. He's right now in third, closing in on Onjak. But Bowers has launched away. Peter, was that some def uh, defense by the 44 to slow him down? He has the speed that can keep up with the Bowers. But does Neal, does Hagen, does Curtis have the amount of time and the amount of speed to catch back up if they are so far behind? Now Larry Hagen now moving into fourth. A great run today by the 21 team, really establishing him. Possibly he could be a championship contender as this se uh, season progresses. Cody Goforth, Austin Murray, Tib Foster right there under a blanket as Foster's going to look to the inside of Murray. The damage to his car from racing Peter a little too aggressively, it seems to have hurt him a little bit, but he's still inside this top 10 and fighting his best in that 40 car. Looking further back, there's Yepes. Yepes has not had the best day today. He's been mired back in traffic. So has Carter Friesen and Jefferson. One car is going to go around. That's the 51 of Dilks. Aiden Smith with a vicious hit from Max Anderson. And he's up and over here at Richmond. Caution is out. And what did I say? It's going to be the back markers crashing. And it's not even the guys fighting and clawing for points. It's guys that are just trying to survive this race. And they're the ones crashing. You see that a lot in the NSDCA. The front guys can usually keep it calm when they're racing for the win. It's just the guys in the back that can't stop. And that's what we've seen here on these last few restarts. Just a couple of guys at the back just getting way too aggressive. Now Aiden Smith's day is done. John Dilks had some heavy damage there. Spurly Tube's there. Now Friesen. Friesen's 20th across the line. Jefferson's 21st. They're still trying to fight their way back up. And no one's coming in. Because you're, you're coming to the end of this. The way this race is looking now, you know, you're going to have to hope that you can even get to the green-white checkered. If I was someone at the back, I'd pit now. Because there's a chance that as this race goes, we just get cautions after cautions. We could see a ton of green-white checkers, which I'm hoping is not the case. But Carson Bowers, your race leader. Onjak second. Neil third. Morris fourth. Edson fifth. Even with as short as these runs have been, Third back to like 10th have been just swapping positions over and over. Curtis was up in the top five on the last restart 
Goforth was out of the top 10. Now they're all together. So it's getting interesting here, but Carson Bowers might just be the man to beat. Adam Mitchell's 36, his second week in a row. Uh, second time he's driving for JSR, and it's going to end in the garage. At least this one's not a hard front-end hit in that 36 car. But JSR's car is going to blow on up. So that is two of the three JSR cars out of this one. Kev Shearer, the other one, is currently in the 16th position. Let's take another replay. Within 10 to go, we'll see who will have the car to beat when we go back green. Third caution of the day for John Dilks in this 51, and it's just him getting hooked by everyone. DJ Gibson now spins him, spins him slightly, but Aiden Smith bounces off a big hit there for the 95 as he's going to go flipping. Dilks makes it through fairly cleanly, but Aiden just here just gets spun, and then Max Anderson comes flying in with teammate Disparito behind him, and it flips that 95 on his roof. Aiden Smith goes for a wild ride there in the Monster Motorsports number 95. It's a big hit there. Thankfully, a driver si or a passenger side hit, not a driver's side hit. So it is a rough hit, but he is will be able to get out of that race car, thankfully. Going back racing here at Richmond with eight to go. Carson Bowers leads. Peter Onjak second. Dusty Neal third. Morris fourth. Edson fifth. Go fourth. Hagen, Porta, Kukulon, and Curtis, your top ten. Will we have a green flag final eight laps? Who knows? Bowers out in front, Onjak second, Neil third, Morris fourth, and in fifth, Jacob Edson. Drivers still hungry for wins, but Carson Bowers hungriest out of these top five. Coming down the front straightaway, a nice jump again, but Onjak's going to be on his bumper. We're green again. Here comes Peter, now going to time his move to the bottom of Bowers. Gets him out of the way. Here comes the 44 to the point. But now Neil is not going to be able to make a move on Bowers. That's going to put that 25 right back on the back bumper of the 44. And will we get this race green the rest of the way? If the back markers can quit crashing, then we can because these front guys have been fairly clean. Now Porta, how damaged that 20 car is. He has to fight and claw to try to get as many points as he can. He's fighting now into the sixth position. But it's Peter Onjak in the lead. If he wins this race, he'll be the points leader. Really, if he finishes inside the top five ahead of Foster, he'll be in the points leader. But here we go. Still coming on around into the closing laps. Six to go at Richmond. And Bowers is all over the back of his boss. Neil in third, just waiting to get CFRO that second win in the Cup Series. Jacob Edson wants to get SBR their second win in the Cup Series. If they can snag it and try to cap off how disappointing of a season this has been. Bowers up the track. That's going to bring Neil into second. Can he chase down Onjak? Who was the guy that he fought for the win at Memphis? It was Peter Onjak for a good portion of that until Stephen Wallace Jr. was able to get up there at the end. Carson Bowers was also a strong driver at Memphis. Memphis and Richmond race pretty similarly. It was a bit harder to pass and in between the cautions you'd need uh, to really make those moves but you could get some green flag runs if possible but I think now Peter Onjak's car is going to be too hard to stop without a caution he's now a second ahead of Neil and with just four to go I think time's running out as Bowers makes a look for second Morris now up for fifth for fourth on Edson as they're going to move he's going to move him up the track a bit Morris to the fourth position there's Curtis Kukulon Hagen Porta up here there is go fourth in the 12th position Murray 13th looking further back Foster's back to 15th Jefferson is up to 18th Burkhart really can't gain any without drivers getting out of this one but it's all Peter Onjak out in front he's got two laps to do it if he gets around and takes the white flag the next flag ends the race just like it was at most sport but if he does not, he has about 19 more seconds to go here at Richmond, and he might just be home free to his third win on the season and on Giotto's fourth straight. Bowers trying to get on Giotto, their second straight, top two finish. It's Peter Onjak out in front. He takes the white flag, but the battle's for second between Bowers and Neal. Now Neal looking to the bottom. Does he have enough? Bowers sends it in on the outside. It's not going to be enough. It looks like Neil's going to pull away. Bowers might come runner up to his teammate again. He won Chicagoland with teammate Tib Foster. They're going to go four in a row in the Cup Series. Peter Onjek wins at Richmond. The field flies across. And the owner of Onjato makes a large statement he is here to win a cup title and that 44 team is now 
Third win on the season for Peter Onjak. What a performance. Onjato with their second one, two in a row. That's Carson Bowers there. Tim Foster taking an extra lap. He comes home 14th. But Peter Onjak takes it all here at Richmond. Thankfully, we had a green race to the end, and it was really just the restart that gave Peter the chance to make the move, and he timed it perfect once again. Takes home the victory. Carson Bowers comes home second. Dusty Neal, a great points day for third. Same with Morris in fourth. So that's going to keep Morris right on the tire tracks of uh, Onjak. Fifth is Curtis. Great run by Edson in sixth. Hagen comes home seventh. That is going to really show that he's a championship threat. 26 points back entering this. He's going to lose time to Onjak, uh, but he was only about 18 points behind Peter uh, instead. Gatlin Downey. Coming home eighth, he really needed a top ten. Cody Goforth ninth, still not a top five this year, but a great run nonetheless. Murray in tenth. Matty Porta comes home thirteenth. Tip Foster fourteenth. Freeze in fifteenth. Jefferson eighteenth. Yepes twenty first. Burkhart twenty eighth. And that's it. Uh, all the other chasers up front, but that is a great sign. The only chaser outside of the top twenty is Brady Burkhart. The only ones. Outside of the top 15 are Jefferson and Burkhart. The rest of them, 15th, 14th, 13th, and then 1st, 3rd, 4th, 7th, 9th, 10th. So you can tell the Chasers are the best of the best, and Peter Onjak is showing that now. The third driver this season to score three victories. I'm pretty sure that's ha that has to be a record. I do not recall a time when we had that many repeat winners in the season. So that leaves uh, Morris Yepes both have two wins this season, as well as Matty Porta. So any of those guys could end up winning in the next five races uh, or six races and, you know, make that mark even further. But you also got uh, Jefferson, Foster, and Onjak now that could go for four or five wins to tie Colton Lane's record in the Mountain Dew Custom Series. But still, it's been a competitive year. Uh, we've had a lot of drivers fighting for these victories. We've had a lot of drivers you know, making it interesting this season. And it came into this race where the top eight were six, were eight, top six, sorry, were eight points separated by them. And the top three only were separated by two points. So this chase format is really putting on a show in the cup series this season. But we'll see the point standings after this. Carter Friesen, a 15th place finish is probably going to kill him in the standings anyway. Austin Murray had a pretty decent day, but it is the top two in Burkhart and Jefferson who are going to now have to climb their way back up as we head through this season here in the Sundrop Cup Series. Six races left to go in the Cup Series, five races to go in the Truck Series, and three races to go in the Mountain Dew Custom Series. And for the MDCS fans, those are some three exciting races, Talladega, Iowa, and Kansas to round out the MDCS season. That's sure to be exciting. We have a great next few races lined up in the NSDCA. A lot of different tracks, a lot of different track types. Sure to be exciting. And it's congratulations to Peter Onjak. The PayPal 400 won by Peter Onjak for his third win on the season with Carson Bowers taking on Jotto's second 1-2 finish in a row. An exciting race capped off here after 120 laps. We thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you guys next time on the NSDCA.